Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Justin Spicer from the Ohio State Legal Services Association, and I'm here with Kathy Hoover, staff attorney with the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic at the Legal Aid Society of Columbus, and Luke Mina, staff attorney with the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic of Southeastern Ohio Legal Services. Today, we're going to be discussing collections. Feel free to leave a comment or a question, and we'll answer whatever we can. Luke, let's start out with some basic information about IRS collections. I know there's been a lot of talk in the media about recent funding for the IRS and tax enforcement. If someone owes money to the IRS, will an, will an IRS agent come and just take their stuff or their money from their bank accounts or paycheck? Or can someone even be arrested for having tax debts? No, the IRS cannot arrest you just for owing money. They will also not just show up to take your property either at your home, your work, or at your bank. There are steps the IRS needs to follow to, to be able to take anything from you. You will be given several opportunities to pay any tax or make a payment plan or other arrangements before they start the process of taking anything. You will generally know in advance what the IRS is planning on doing. And I say generally only because if you do not open your mail or update your address with the post office or IRS, they may not be able to get those notices to you. A good opportunity to remind people to keep their address updated with the IRS. So how does someone end up in a position where they owe a balance to the IRS? So there's several reasons why a taxpayer may have a balance due with the IRS. A common reason is the taxpayer did not have enough money withheld from their paycheck during the year. Then when they go to file their taxes at the end of the year, they discover they owe money. Also, people can owe the IRS as a result of an audit or if they fail to file their tax return on time. If you owe taxes, the IRS will send you a bill. If you don't pay the first bill, the IRS will normally send you at least one additional bill. If you still don't respond, that's when collection actions will begin. Luke, if I have a balance due and I'm not able to pay, what can I do? So if you cannot pay the balance you owe, the IRS has payment options available. The most important thing you can do once you learn you owe the IRS is to act. Owing taxes can be intimidating, but the worst thing you can do is to ignore the problem. If you disagree with the bill, call the number on the notice and explain why you disagree. If you agree you owe the money, you can call the IRS to discuss a payment plan or other collection options. Kathy, what collection options does the IRS have available? So depending on your income, you can qualify for three different options. First, you can qualify for currently not collectible status. Second, you may be able to get an offer in compromise. Or third, you may be able to set up a payment plan. Luke, what's that first option Kathy mentioned, the currently not collectible status? So currently not collectible um, or CNC is when you and the IRS agree that you owe the tax, but due to your current financial situation, you cannot pay it. For this option, you need to show that you won't be able to afford your basic living expenses if you pay the tax as owed. To see if you qualify for CNC, you can contact the IRS at 800-829-1040. Again, that's 800-829-1040. When you call, have documentation of your income and monthly expenses available when you talk to the agent. Kathy, the second option you mentioned was an offer in compromise. How does that work? So when you submit an offer in compromise to the IRS, you're asking to settle the tax pay taxes for less than the full amount due. An offer in compromise looks at what the, is called the taxpayer's reasonable collection potential, or RCP, which is the taxpayer's ability to pay. The RCP includes the value of the taxpayer's assets, such as real estate, automobiles, bank accounts, and other property. And in addition to property, the RCP also includes the income you are expected to make in the future, minus certain amounts needed for basic living expenses. The offer and compromise process does take a while to complete, and there are several forms that need to be submitted to the IRS. For more information, you can go to irs.gov forward slash OIC. The third option is an installment agreement. Can you explain what that is, Luke? An installment agreement or a payment plan is an agreement with the IRS that you will make smaller payments over time to pay the balance in full. There are several types of installment agreements and some require a setup fee. If you have questions about an installment agreement, you can visit irs.gov 
forward slash OPA. Kathy, if I have a balance due from 2017, can the IRS still collect? Yes, the IRS can collect your taxes up to 10 years from the date that they were assessed. And assessed means the day the IRS puts them on your account and starts collection, which may be several years after the actual due date. There are also situations when the time can be suspended or paused, which give the IRS even more time to collect. What does it mean if I get a letter that says a federal tax lien was filed? A lien is a legal claim against your current property as well as your future property. When you don't pay the first bill for taxes due, a lien is created by law and attaches to your property, such as your home or your car. In this case, a lien is not a piece of paper, but a right the IRS has to your property if they want to exercise it. If the lien reaches a certain dollar amount, generally $10,000 or more, a notice of federal tax lien may be filed with the county recorder's office in the county that you live. This notice of federal tax lien is a piece of paper that gives public notice to creditors that the IRS has a lien on your property. A public notice is something that is available for anyone to view. Kathy, what's the difference between a tax lien and a tax levy? Well, the federal tax lien is a legal claim against your property. That is, the IRS has the first right to take your property. A levy is a seizure that actually takes your property or rights to your property, like your house, your car, your income, money in your bank account, retirement accounts, or social security payments to, take, to pay back that tax debt. There is a process the IRS must go through to be able to actually take your property, and you will generally be given notice before it happens. Again, I say generally only because if you don't open your mail or update your address with the post office or IRS, they may not be able to get these notices to you. Luke, what safeguards are in place to protect taxpayers if they receive a notice of federal tax lien or notice of levy? So once a taxpayer receives a notice of federal tax lien or notice of levy, they can request what's called a collection due process or CDP hearing with the IRS appeals office. The taxpayer will need to request a CDP hearing no later than 30 days after receiving the notice. A CDP hearing is an opportunity to discuss options other than a levy or a lien and lets the taxpayer dispute the amount they owe if they haven't already done so. If you miss the 30 day deadline, you can request an equivalent hearing within a year. The only difference between the two is that if you disagree with the outcome of the CDP hearing, you can appeal the decision to the U.S. Tax Court. That option is not available with an equivalent hearing. If people have more questions about the IRS collection process, where can they find additional information, Kathy? If taxpayers still have questions about the process, they can review IRS Publication 594, which explains the collection process and options that taxpayers have. To find that, they need to go to irs.gov and search for Publication 594. Luke, anything else we need to know? Yes, the IRS free file has been extended until November 17th. Normally tax e-filing season closes October 15th. However, this year, to make sure people receive the credits they are owed, the IRS has given people more time. Even if you have no income, you may want to file to claim any refundable tax credits that you may be eligible for. We will put a link to more information about qualifications in the chat. Thanks everyone for listening. The video of this session and the others in our tax chat series, including claiming tax credits when you don't need to file, are available on our Facebook page. Join us on November 4th when we return to our ongoing small business and self-employment series. Thanks everyone and we'll see you next time. Thank you.